Weaving its way down the side of a mountain is a network of snow-covered concrete walls, bridges, and channels. This is such a strange-looking site. It curves around with these oblong structures coming out of the high wall, and it kind of starts but just disappears into the forest. It looks like something from Mad Max the setting for a futuristic game of death. A concrete channel sits hidden in the forest, high above the city. It's covered in graffiti, and it's stained with algae and uh, decay. It is a strange place indeed. It's not the only deserted structure here. On different slopes around the city are other devastated buildings. And together, they tell a story of violence and death. What were they all built for? And what sinister event left them severely damaged and abandoned? Some of the answers are linked to the war that ripped Sarajevo apart towards the end of the 20th century. So was this all built as part of an elaborate military structure? At first sight, it has all the hallmarks of a damaged and war-torn defensive line. This location is strategically important because typically those who hold the high ground in a military conflict have an advantage. In this case, that was very true in terms of artillery positionings and snipers being able to terrorize the city. You've got snipers shooting anybody. We're not just shooting soldiers, we're shooting civilians, we're shooting children. They're shooting people who, who just are caught in the crossfire. It is a ghastly place. These structures, in fact, weren't built for war. They were all involved in one of the city's proudest moments. These are the remains of the 1984 Winter Olympic venues. The Winter Olympics were extremely important for Sarajevo. For a start, it's the first time that a socialist state has hosted the Winter Olympics. But for Yugoslavia, it was a chance to put the best foot forward on a world stage. This gives Sarajevo a chance to, to be seen. So they really think with, with that much focus coming onto them from abroad, this is going to do wonders for the Yugoslavian tourist industry. But as previous hosts had found out, the cost of putting on the games had a tendency to spiral out of control. The decaying structures here tell a story of despair rather than celebration. So was Sarajevo really able to pull it off? You're going to need to look after the athletes. You're gonna look after everybody who, who's gonna to come to see the games. So what they've already got, they're going to need to reinvigorate. Well, Sarajevo had to invest a large amount of money in both the venues themselves as well as the infrastructure to handle all of the crowds, so it was quite a daunting task. One of the key sites was this curving concrete channel, and its position on this mountain offers a clue to what it was. A huge bobsleigh and luge track. Slavko Malik is a former manager of one of the Olympic venues. This is one of the steepest tracks in the world, where crews were able to achieve super high speeds and had to possess a lot of skill to avoid flipping over. But despite all those elements, the speed, the steepness and the rest, it was still considered one of the safest tracks. Today, its crumbling remains, peppered with holes, speak only of a deadlier use. But was this track and the other sites on the mountain an Olympic success story? On February 8th, 1984, the world tuned in to find out. The Olympics weren't just successful in a technical and organizational sense. It was also a financial success. 
the equivalent of a $20 million surplus speaks for itself. I do not remember any Olympic Games that were so successful, especially nowadays. It was the first Winter Olympics to actually make money since the early 1930s, so for the people of Yugoslavia, it was a great success. After the Winter Olympics, the facilities continued to be in use. The luge track, for instance, was used in many World Cup competitions, while the ski resort went on to become one of the most popular in the country. But the sights today show that the Olympic dream was eventually shattered. So what happened? I never believed that there could be a war in Sarajevo. Not for one moment did I believe it could happen. Life in Sarajevo was such that you could not foresee war coming here. Just eight years later, in 1992, the Yugoslav Federation was breaking apart and civil war had engulfed Sarajevo. For three years, fighting between Bosnia's Muslim, Serb, and Croat populations tore the state apart. The Bosnian Serbs held the city to ransom, and the siege lasted 44 months, the longest siege of a capital city in modern history. The scars can still be seen in the pockmarked concrete of those structures. And the mountainside that housed the bobsleigh track had a deadly role to play. The bobsleigh track was, in effect, the front line between the two sides. And unfortunately, the track was both damaged by mortars and used as an artillery position. All of the nearby facilities were destroyed. Because of its elevated position overlooking the city, this slope and others surrounding Sarajevo became key offensive locations from where artillery would unleash a savage pounding upon the city. In the peak of the siege, 300 shells a day rained down on Sarajevo. The Bosnian Serb commander says, shell them to the edge of madness, and he's good to his word. The city's bright future had faded while whispered accounts of horrific scenes emerged. It's at the medal podium where perhaps some of the most tragic events happen. Soldiers, when they've captured people from the town, they take them to the medal podium and there they are executed. It's even said that the Olympic Hotel was used as a prison. So many thousands of people died during the siege that they ran out of space to bury them. In the end, they had to use the Olympic arena as a mass cemetery. The ordeal finally came to an end on February 29th, 1996. But by then, the lives of 11,541 Sarajevans had already been lost. Today, while some areas have been patched up, the abandoned structures across this mountain still display the horrific scars of a very dark period in this city's history. When you look at what's left from those Winter Games, we have to look at that as a memorial to the spirit and accomplishment of the Yugoslavian people, not to the horrific events that came later.